So great, thank you so much for uh, agreeing to talk with me today. Um, we are like super excited. We're all sort of big fans of the book here. Uh, so actually, yeah, at the you end, see my cat in the background. Oh, excellent! Okay. Nice? There you go. It, I mean, it looks like just sort of like a uh, dead trouble. lump of pillow or something, but that's actually a cat. <laughs> Where do you think the Martian sits in the context of other sort of classic Mars exploration literature? So Ben Bova's Mars, uh, Ray Bradbury's The Martian Chronicles, and Kim Sally Robinson's Red, Green, Blue, Mars. Red, Finch. Green, Blue, right. Um, I don't know how, I mean, that, that's like, I, I, I don't know how to evaluate my own work against those. Um, although I would say that mine is, mine is less about the exploration slash colonization of Mars, and it's more just a, a survival story, mm -hmm. right? And um, all, all, all the other titles you mentioned, well, except Ben Bova, but um, RGB and, um, and the Martian Chronicles are about the colonization of Mars, and they're about the social dynamics and, mm -hmm. and just huge, you know, monumental mm -hmm. effects, whereas the Martian is, is, is just at the very, very early stages where there's just, um, you know, a, a small group of people on Mars, and, mm -hmm. and for most of the book, one person on Mars. Mm -hmm. So it's really, um, it's really in a completely different category, I guess. Mm -hmm. it's, not about a, it's not about a burgeoning society. It's, it's about mm -hmm. a man trying to survive in the wild. Mm -hmm. right. You know, Watney has many near-death experiences in the book, but the, the plot never feels like you're using deus ex machinas to keep him alive, which is really something that can, that can kill suspense. Um, mm -hmm. How did you evolve, avoid that pitfall of, of just, you know, of, of setting things up instead of just pulling things out of, out of a hat? Well, um, the whole kind of, the, the main conceit of the novel, or the whole, not conceit, I, the whole uh, mechanics of the novel are problem-solution, problem-solution, mm -hmm. right? And so the solution part is, is, those are the main plot points, having him come up with a solution with his limited resources and stuff like that. So it was easy to avoid deus ex machinas on the solutions. The biggest challenge was making sure that each new problem was plausible and stemmed from the existing scenario instead of him just getting unlucky over and over again, right? So I tried to make each problem come from um, this either, either from just reasonable uh, stuff like the equipment that was designed to last 31 days, you know, wearing out after 400, you know, days or whatever. Right. And or um, what I really liked is when each problem was caused by his solution to the previous problem. Right. It's like, OK, you know, it's just this constant panicked cascade failure as he's just juggling everything to try to stay alive. That's what I that's what I shot for. Mm -hmm. The mission architecture of, of the book is very grounded in you know, some of the current reference uh, missions, uh, manufacturing fuel for the turn journey, prepositioning equipment and so on. Um, but the way the crew actually gets to and from Mars is quite different from those, uh, the reference uh, missions. So where did the idea for the Hermes spacecraft come from? And, and just if people have, this is the, the a reusable spacecraft that basically shuttles back and forth between Earth and Mars for multiple missions. Right. Um, it's just my idea for what would be the most efficient and effective uh, mission profile. Now, remember, I'm, I'm an enthusiast, not an expert. So this is just like what I came up with. But I do think that ion propulsion is the way to go. It's how I, I think it's going to be an absolute necessity for, um, for, you know, interplanetary travel. Among other things, a cycler, uh, cyclers have a few flaws, the main ones being that y you can't change course. You can't really do anything. You just have to wait. Whereas an ion drive allows you to have lots, literally infinite abort opportunities. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine you're halfway to Mars um, in your ion propelled ship like Hermes, mm -hmm. you're halfway to Mars and then something goes wrong. Well, you can abort and, and you can abort back to Earth and get back to Earth in like, you know, 100 days instead mm -hmm. of having to wait 680 days until mm -hmm. the cycler finds its way back to Earth. Mm -hmm. 
Um, everything in the book is based on real technology. It's mm -hmm. it's stuff that really exists or is a slight improvement on things that really exist. Mm -hmm. uh, but the ion engines are really a huge improvement over what we currently have. Mm -hmm. They're working on them right now, and and they're they're. I mean, the, this isn't some theoretical thing. I mean, there have been spacecraft out there that that are powered by ion drives, mm -hmm. but orders of magnitude less powerful than what Hermes has. Mm -hmm. So. Also, one complication, I don't, I don't know, but one complication is really the only way to have an ion drive, like in Hermes, is to have a reactor. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the best way to get that amount of energy density up. Mm -hmm. And I imagine there'd be a lot of political hurdles to putting mm -hmm. a nuclear reactor in space. Like, a lot of people would, would oppose that. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't. I think it's great. But they'd be worried about, like, what happens if your launch fails? <laughs> 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 right. right. Yeah. Concern. Yeah. So, questions that we have among the staff of IEEE Spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, so, what need grows potatoes to stay alive? Now, as, as a born and bred Irishman, I, I approved of that very much. <laughs> but um, did you consider other plants? Where did, where did potatoes come from? Uh, I did. I considered lots of other plants. Actually, what I really wanted it to be was peas. Um, because uh, that is the most plausible thing that he would be able to grow with standard supplies because peas are themselves the seeds for peas, right? Mm -hmm. So if you plant peas, you get pea pots. Mm -hmm. um, so all he would, he, he could have like a meal pack. There could be like, you know, a hundred meal packs that have peas in them. And he's like, I just need to find one pea mm -hmm. anywhere in these meal packs that is still viable and is still alive enough that it can germinate. And mm -hmm. so that would be much more plausible than him having, you know, live potatoes that for some reason were like shipped, like, you know, not dehydrated and stuff like that. So that's how I came up. I had to come up with a whole Thanksgiving plot line mm -hmm. thing. To, you know. So the reason I chose potatoes is because there is no other crop that comes anywhere near producing the amount of calories uh, per, per land area as potatoes. Like, it's like an order of magnitude higher. So peas would just not have generated enough calories. He just doesn't have enough land uh, mm -hmm. within his hab. But potatoes, he could. Yeah. Great. One of the most developed technologies in the book comes in the form of the spacesuits. And the abilities and the, the limits of the spacesuits um, are really critical to the plot at several points. So mm -hmm. did thinking about real suit tech inspire some of those plot points, or did you have a plot turn that you wanted to happen and then worked out the tech to match? Um, it was uh, it was really uh, based on the real spacesuits. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would always start with the science and then work forward to the plot. And, and actually, that often generated plot. Like, once I sat down and did all the math, like, that's how I realized he wouldn't have enough water to grow mm. potatoes by sitting down and doing, well, well wait a minute, he, how much water does it take to grow that much? Oh, he doesn't have anywhere near enough. And so that gave me the whole plot line of how he had to create water. Um, um, but what, what turns out that I was actually pessimistic, I was, uh, it turned out I was too pessimistic on spacesuit technology, um, the, the stuff they have right now, the stuff they, they, I, I went, uh, back in April, I went, was it April? I don't remember, but, um, a few months ago I went to Johnson Space Center and they showed me around, gave me VIP tours. They, they treated me like a king. It was awesome. <laughs> I mean, it was like the best week of my life. Seriously. They let me go into the mission control center and control and remote control a camera that's mounted on ISS. It was awesome. Wow, yeah, it was just so awesome. But um, anyway, they were showing me some of the new PLIS technology that they're working on. Mm -hmm. PLIS is Portable Life Support System. And basically, that's the part of uh, that's the backpack part of the spacesuit. The rest of the spacesuit is basically just a pressure vessel that's the shape of your body. And um, they're working on cool stuff for that, too, like using bands and bindings to keep the pressure in instead of just having like you wandering around in a big puffy balloon. Mm -hmm. Um, in the film, it, from the trailer, you can see they have the uh, the more tight fitting concept mm -hmm. in mind, um, and that and that's a real thing too. I mean, they're they're working on that. Mm -hmm. But the but what I was saying, um, the the new Plis can uh, no longer needs uh, uh, filters for carbon dioxide. Oh. They've solved that problem. They so now it can it has like a series of membranes 
that it can it what it does is it takes advantage of the fact that there is vacuum or near vacuum on the outside and it has these membranes that'll basically let carbon dioxide out but won't let um, anything else out and so uh, it can literally just um, filter carbon dioxide forever with no with no expended anything um, now, what the current pluses do that they're working on, the, 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 what they have right now is it just vents it out into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. But it, of course, would be trivial for them to, instead of venting it, collect it into a tank. Mm -hmm. So if you're on an extended Mars mission, you're not wasting your, uh, your CO2. Mm -hmm. Then again, if you're on Mars, you have an infinite supply <laughs> of CO2. So if you want some, you can just pull it out of the air. Mm -hmm. So... So, uh, what, what do you think about the casting in the movie? I know there's been oh. some debate about the ethnicity of the cast versus characters in the book, such as people like Venkat and, Venkat and Mindy became Parham. Vincent. Yeah. Um, well, first off, I'm thrilled with the casting. It's an unbelievable cast. <laughs> it's just incredible. Um, in terms of ethnicity, there are only two characters who weren't the ethnicity that I imagined. Um, and what, one thing that's interesting, just as a side note, I, I always imagined Rich Purnell as, as being black, but I never mentioned it in the book because, you know, it never came up. It wasn't an issue. I imagined him as sort of an older guy, like maybe in his 50s or 60s, and, you know, really socially awkward and stuff like that, just sort of a, a geek dude. But I imagined him as an old black guy. And then uh, out of nowhere, they just happened to cast, like, you know, Donald Glover as Rich Purnell. Uh, and I'm like, Okay, I imagined a boulder, but wow, you happened to get the ethnicity that I imagined and never told anyone about. <laughs> um, another place where the ethnicity, uh, well, so that's a place where it did match unexpectedly. A place where it didn't match and is reasonable is Mindy Park. I imagined her as Korean, ethnically Korean, Park, the name. However, Park is also an English surname, and the name Mindy doesn't exactly scream Korean ancestry, right? So that's just, you know... I, I didn't make it clear. Mm -hmm. um, uh, my, my idea for all these people was, was that they were all like nth generation Americans, right? So that's why, you know, you know, Mindy was ethnically Korean, but her family's been in America for God knows how long. And so her name's Mindy. You know? um, and uh, now the big one is um, Chewy Tell Ejia for playing mm -hmm. um, Venkat Kapoor, whose name in the movie is now Vincent Kapoor. Mm -hmm. Okay. And originally they had, uh, so the reason they did that is they originally had Irfan Khan lined up to play Venkat. Mm -hmm. um, and they had him lined up to play Venkat right up until like three weeks before shooting. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it was like right up, I mean, they were like, this is perfect. You know, big name Indian actor to play the, you know, the, and, and uh, Venkat is the second most important character. I mean, he has the second largest number of lines mm -hmm. of anybody, you know, after Watney. I mean, he's very important. And they were like, okay, we've got that set, no problem. Uh, then he had to back out because of a complication with a Bollywood project um, that there, there was a, a, a Bollywood shooting schedule that got delayed and he was contractually obligated to go do some reshoots for them and it conflicted with the time. And th they, couldn't, they couldn't get him in. There's just so much vincat in the story that they could not get his shooting time in. And so they said, like, okay, well, we're going to start shooting in three weeks. We have three weeks to get, you know, someone to play the second most important character in this thing. So they said, like, we no longer have the luxury of targeting an ethnicity. We want to get the biggest name actor that we can get, uh, actor or actress. They were also willing, they, they said, like, we'll, we'll, make it, we'll make him a woman. We'll, we'll do whatever it takes. We want the biggest name that we can get who ha happens to be available. And that ended up being Chewy Tell Ejia for. Wow. And so it's a big, it, that was a big get. Um, he's a big, you know, he's a, he's a huge star. And um, every, everybody's really happy with how that turned mm -hmm. out. But then they had to say, like, okay, how do we explain Venkat Kapoor is being played by this, like, British guy, <laughs> you know, who's, like, you know, who's black. And so they said, like, well, okay, we're going to name him to Vincent Kapoor. There's actually a, 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 a Hindu population in, um, I think it's uh, Nigeria, something like that. There's a non-trivial number of them. So they said, like, okay, so he's, he's still, he's, we get to keep his, like, religion. We get mm -hmm. to say that he's Hindu. So they, he kept the name Kapoor and just uh, mm -hmm. gave him the name Vincent. 